Using the Excel table like a pro, many secrets about Microsoft Excel tables you never knew until now. Microsoft Excel made easy. So guys, in this video, we are going to be learning and revealing how best to use the Microsoft Excel table. So on our screen here is a data set and we want to start by transforming it to a table or changing it to a table. It's not actually a table yet, even though it looks like a table. So how fast can we actually do this? First of all, you press Ctrl T quickly on your keyboard and it will select the whole data set for you. And it's going to ask you, where is the data for your table? Definitely it's what has been selected then you now make sure that you tick my table has headers because of course this table has headers then you hit OK. But before you press Ctrl T, make sure that a cell is selected within that particular set of data that you want to transform to a table because if you click outside and you press Ctrl T, it will eventually not work or give you some, some incorrect results. So what you just have to do, click within, and hit Ctrl T, then hit OK. And you notice that your data is transformed to a table. Once this table is selected, make sure you go ahead to rename it accordingly because by default, it just gives it a random name. So I'm going to call this maybe sales. Now, one thing you have to do is to make sure that your table name is unique within that particular workbook. So because sales is already taken, so I'm going to just call this sales one and I hit what enter. So anytime I can make reference to this particular table by hitting what equal to sales one. So and this particular table will be selected by default. How about that? Now you notice that once your table has been created, you can also go ahead to use it for other things. Now this table, I can just quickly go to my what menu tab design menu tab and you see what you can summarize this table data using what pivot table so once you click pivot table this comes up and you can now go ahead to work with this table and summarize data using pivot table so we've actually made a video on how to create quick pivot tables using excel you can go ahead to check the video up on your screen now so you hit ok but in this case you are going to cancel because you are not creating pivot table in this instance. So, hope you are getting value from this video. So, use of slicers to filter table. So, this is what you can actually use the table for. Is that right? So, using the Excel table like a pro. So, how do you activate this? So, make sure that you are within the table. Go to the menu tab, design section, then click on what? Insert slicer. So, the slicer is actually a tool for filtering so you have all the table headers here so you can decide which of the headers that you want to work with so supposing i want to work with um let's say the product then you hit what okay mind you you can select more than one but to start with let us just work with product you hit okay and this comes up to you all right so you can actually format the slicer accordingly depending on what you want to achieve now you notice once you click any of this it will filter it out for you once you click any of this it will filter it out for you so what happens if you want to select more than one particular product you click here multi-select so once this is activated you can select more than one product so once you click it back it will deselect and that does it so you can clear all filters by hitting here at any instance and all filters will be cleared so someone might ask, so how do I remove this slicer? So what you just need to do is to right click and you click what? Remove product. Now clicking on the table again, going back to design view, you can still insert slicer and you can do a whole lot of things with it. And that is how to use Microsoft Excel slicers on table. Now the next thing we're going to be looking at is how to insert summary on our Microsoft Excel table. So it's very, very easy for you to actually insert summary. So make sure that the table you are working with is selected. Then go to the design menu tab and click on what total 
rule. Now, once you click on total rule, it will bring up this new rule for you. So that once you click on this particular column where you have the sales header, you see a drop down. So in the drop down, you have a whole lot of summaries that can be performed on this particular table. So you can if quickly calculate the average, <laughs> can calculate count. You can use the max. I noticed that count and count numbers actually does the same thing, but probably because it's actually numeric values. So you have mean and you can do a whole lot. So you can even look for more functions to work with. Is all right. So that is how to actually quickly create data summary on Microsoft Excel tables. So the next thing you are, we are going to look at is how to create charts, how to create dynamic charts. How about that? Now, supposing I want to quickly create charts on this particular table and I select my range of cells, the next thing I will do is to go to what? Insert, then click on this charts, recommended charts, then select any of these guys. So you can now create charts. But I want to just quickly point something out to us that the chart is dynamic. That means as the values changes on this particular table, it will be reflected on the chart. So I want to quickly change this 272 to, let's say 45, and I hit enter, and we'll have this. But this is not actually what to make by dynamic change. So supposing I insert a new row, is all right. Now I go ahead to fill it up with data. And I have maybe here I have a fastness. All right, then I have the amount. So if you notice, as I typed in fastness, it is reflected here. So the amount probably is maybe 25. Is okay? So 25, oh sorry, undo. So the amount is what, 25. So you notice that the 25 is reflected here. So any update I make on this particular set of data that is selected, it will be reflected on the chart. How about that? So another way of using Microsoft Excel table like a pro is it can be used to insert running what? Totals. So the running totals are important in data analysis as they show the overall progress. Excel table structure enables a quick insert of calculated fields, which is the best fit for running totals. This is possible because of the structured reference format of the formula, a feature unique in Excel tables. So how do we insert running totals to this particular table? So one thing you have to do is to make sure that your data is first of all formatted as a table. So you hit equal to here and use the sum function. So as easy as this is, you notice that we can actually use it to do a whole lot of things. So select this particular cell, hit comma, then select this particular cell and it references it as what at sales then close it up and watch the magic happens so what it does is to automatically find the running totals of this particular table is all right so running total eventually what it does is it will first of all call up this then sum this plus this to give you this this plus this to give you this and running total is actually very very important in data analysis so i'm going to quickly rename this as what running total after renaming it i quickly open up this to accommodate the content of my table header which is running total now have you ever noticed excel table awesome data referencing so most excel users are used to cell referencing which is mostly hard to understand Excel tables introduced structured references which are easily explainable, especially in a formula created outside the word Excel table. Now we have our table and we have another set of data here. So we want to count the number of sales per product in this table. So what we want, need to do is to use the Excel function count if. Is all right. So the count if function is actually used in data summary. I've actually made a video that shows you how to use some of these Excel functions for data summary. Go ahead to watch it right away. The link is on your screen. So count if then the range for this particular count if function is what the product range. How do I select the product range? I hold down Control Shift then the down arrow key. Now you notice what happens here. Instead of telling me that my range is from D2 to wherever, it just tells me that what? 
I'm selecting the product column under the sales table. How awesome. So after I've selected my range, I hit comma. Then I can now select what? My criteria, which in this case is G3. Or I can type in the paper in speech what? Max, telling Excel that it's actually a string. Then I close up my bracket and I hit what? Enter. So by so doing, it's going to tell me that what? Paper appears what? Four times on this table. Or the total number of counts for paper is what? Four times. So I can go ahead to replicate all this. I say that also labels appear what four times, binders appear what four times. Now remember, Excel can be used for what data modeling. Now supposing I go ahead to delete these binders here, you notice that my count reduces to what three. So these are the many many ways you can use Microsoft Excel like a pro. I bet you never knew some of these ways. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead to smash that subscribe button right away. Also like and share this video. If you have any question or if you have any ideas of any video you want us to make videos on, go ahead to also drop it in the comment section. Do well to turn on your notification bell icon so that you'll be the first to know when we drop videos like this. Watch the video on your screen now that shows you how to use very powerful Microsoft Excel keyboard shortcuts. Excel made easy.